divas and what's up divas it's your girl april so you guys already know what time it is it's wednesday real talk wednesday and about the hair that i'm rocking so i've been told from the video review that i did because it's a wig it's a synthetic wig and it's called straw curl by free trust it's like a micro braid wig and there's not so many micro braids but i went ahead and did the video there were a lot of thumbs down some people didn't like it of course i transitioned my hair in the front to go with the wig meaning took some of the braids out in the front and braided my own hair just so it could look like it was micro braids um i've actually had this wig on for a week i have not removed it because my hair has been braided into it i'm gonna be honest and tell you i love it i've gotten many compliments on it people thought i had my hair braided i did reveal that it was a wig so yeah so I like it and I'm going to probably take it off within probably tomorrow or so I'm not really sure but I sleep with it on I just put it up in a high ponytail and a bonnet on top and I'm good to go but other than that the week has been great um Saturday Friday my fiance came home um and was like come on I'm gonna take you to go buy your computer that you wanted took me and bought me an iMac um OS 10 which I am like very thrilled about but very overwhelmed with because I am a PC user and you can ask me anything about a PC how to edit you know I have my own editing software and everything and it's it goes smooth like smooth sailing with this damn um iMac because it's a desktop it's Got a big screen please I've been watching tutorials on YouTube which is really not that helpful because the title says one thing and the tutorial says another um, or some people's instructions are really not clear and though I've asked many people how to do certain things I've got no answer so what did I do I went out and bought this today so this is the OS 10 Yozy Might all-in-one for dummies I will tell you this this book is damn thick it was from Barnes and Nobles, $38, um, but it has everything you'll need to know in layman's terms, and I will be honest and tell you, I love these books for dummies um, because they make things so much simpler, um, your life a whole lot easier, and it's probably going to take me forever to learn how to use this Mac, but I've been told that, oh, once you learn it, you'll never go back. I find that very hard to believe because right about now, I wish I would have bought um the beats pc that one was just as nice see i'm a type of person if it's not broke don't fix it so and i'm very kind of technical technology and um not too smart when it comes to a lot of technology so i kind of like to stick into what i do know and yeah so hmm i'm very like feeling like damn i should have just stuck with what i know instead of trying to be like everybody else because everybody says oh mac is the best and that could be so but if you don't open and click on certain things on your pc you should be safe from viruses but we shall see how this goes um because i don't want to let my soon-to-be husband down and i love the gift that he bought me but yeah i don't even really know too much about windows 8 i like windows 7 or Windows Vista um, now they got Windows 10 and I re refuse to upgrade on my laptop I just refuse I will stick with what I have and be happy with it because I just do simple things like editing so now it's to the point where I have to buy new editing software for this Mac which is 300 freaking dollars and it's like are you serious right now because iMovie sucks and for those of you who use it please Please tell me that I'm wrong or there's something to it that I'm just not getting because from what I've read in the tutorial that I did watch, which was awesome for 42 minutes, iMovie is really not that great. It's very generic and basic. So, yeah. So, I will be reading this and learning. So, there will probably be no anytime soon videos uploaded to YouTube using this Mac because that stamp thing is hard for real. So anyway, for today's drink, I have um, some Bacardi Torch Cherry Rum and some Donald Duck Orange Juice. So this, I don't have any grenadine, but it is what it is. So we're going to just pour some of this in here. I already did have a little drink. Now I'm going to be honest and tell you girls this. You do need some type of sweetener or, or grenadine because this cherry, this um, cherry rum really tastes like um, cough syrup. It has like a taste of like medicine that we used to get when we were kids. So 
I just pour this in it, but I also was pouring like some iced tea in it just to take the taste away of the cough syrupy. But I will be honest and tell you this, like all the other flavors I get, it's either mango and pineapple. But this one, the cherry will get you twisted, will get you tipsy with this, this. Normally it, I don't, but with this particular flavor, it seems like it's a lot stronger than most. So yes but get yourself some grenadine it was all out at the store and pour a little bit in that girls you will feel toasted 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 so let's get on to real talk if you need a life situation advice about yourself or someone you know you can go ahead and send me an email to muffin is my lovers 2012 and please put in the subject line real talk and if you want to change the names of the actual participants in the email then you can go ahead and do so hi april first let me say i love your channel i never miss a real talk video something you said in your last real talk video hit home so i thought i'd write you with my own situation this is nothing crazy, but as a mother, I could use your advice. I'm 23, almost 24, and I got married one year ago to my high school sweetheart. We've been together for six years and are, and are more in love now than ever before. He's still in college and working, but graduating in May, and I graduated college last year, and I started my first full-time job while going to grad school at night. Here's my dilemma. My grandfather died last month, and for some reason, it really sparked me to want to have a child like yesterday. My husband was so excited when I told him I was finally ready, but my mother was not too pleased. Like I said, I'm in grad school, and she worries that if I have a child, I won't finish. I think I can handle a pregnancy and school, but I am a little nervous because my program requires me to complete an internship, and I don't know how they'll feel about having a very pregnant intern. So my question is, do you think I should listen to my mother and wait until I'm completely done with school in 2017, or should I go with my heart and start my little family now? My husband and I are not as stable as we want to be. We rent a town home and aren't making a six figures. Aren't making six figures or anything. But when he graduates in May, we'll be in completely uh, in a completely different boat. I really would love your input. Thanks, April. And her name is Tara. So, this is a really, really easy one, okay? So, Tara is 23, 24 years old, married to her boo, her high school sweetheart. Then they're both in college. She's in grad school. She's got a first full-time job, and they are in love more than ever before. Married about a year. Um, unfortunately, Tara's grandfather passed away about a month ago, and that is giving her the baby blue. She wants to have a baby. Her husband is excited about it because he's ready, because she's ready. But Tara's mom is not too pleased about you know what she wants to do because she feels like if she gets pregnant she's not going to finish school and even Tara has concerns like she may have to take an internship and they may feel some type of way about a very pregnant intern and also they're not making six figures but they're not destitute either and they rent a town home so what is my opinion she's going to be graduating and she'll be done with school next year one year from now so what is my opinion so Tara you kind of you kind of hit the nail hit the nail on the head when you said that you guys are really not stable right now and that you're concerned about what they'll feel if you are very pregnant as an intern and you have one year to go it's not that you have to listen to your mother because you are always the best judge for your own life you know what i mean a lot of people give us advice just like i'm giving you some right now but it's basically food for thought but a lot of people give us some advice of what they would do in a situation or what they wouldn't do in a situation. However, you kind of already figured that out and you really don't need my help. But here's what I'm going to tell you. If you're about to finish school in 2017, which is actually a year away, and you're concerned about being very pregnant as an intern and you don't want to mess that your chances up, why not wait? One year is not a long time. 
And like you said, your husband will be finished in school in May and things will match up. You guys will have a better lifestyle. Why don't you put your cards on the table, write your pros and cons down of what it would be like if you had a baby right now before you graduated. How would it impact your life? You know what I mean? Everybody wants a baby, not everybody, but enough of us do because they are the cutest little things in the world. They're sweet, but then you know what happens? Them little people grow up to be motherfuckers, okay? And you just be like, damn. So you never want to have any regrets. However, I would never feel like having a baby is a regret. But if you can put things on hold for a short period of time just to make your life, your husband's life, and your baby's life a much better place, then why not? I'm going to tell you what. I have five kids and two grandchildren. One of my children, which is the eldest, my son, who is 23 years old, we don't speak to each other. Um, and he has my grandson that actually turned three years old on the 12th of this month. Which, by the time I put this video out, it will be yesterday. So, because today is the 12th on Tuesday when I'm recording this. Now, like I said, me, he and I do not speak only because he's a disrespectful motherfucker. When I say disrespectful, he surpasses the word disrespectful. Like, there's no way on God's green earth do you think that it's okay to speak to your mother the way he has spoken to me via text message or via phone line. And... I think it has a lot to do with his jealousy and hate, but you are a hateful person and you have no manners and no respect for women in general. And this is my son that I'm speaking about. And I'll be the first to tell you, he has no respect at all for women because he degrades them, he disrespects them, and with his little girlfriend, he puts hands on her. And I'm the type of person, I'm not going to deal with that. So if you don't want to deal with me and you want to disrespect me and her, then you know what? We don't have to have any dealings. And with that being said, we've gotten into it huge on Christmas Day via text, okay? Because he started some shit with me through the text message. And here's the thing. If I'm not speaking to you and you telling me to kiss your fucking ass verbally, telling me that, those exact words, and to do other things and telling my daughter she could do, you know what, kiss, mm-hmm then I don't really think that I need to call your son, who is my grandson, and wish him a Merry Christmas. Because if I'm not fucking with you, and you're totally disrespectful to me and my family here, then there is no connection. I disown him. I don't speak to him. And whatever he's going through on that side of the world in New York is his fucking business, okay? So these are things that some people have to deal with, unfortunately, when their kids think that they're too grown and that they can do things on their own. So you got an apartment and a job, and he thinks that he's better than everybody now. Uh, I got an apartment and I got a job, and if you need some money, you can just let me know. First of all, sweetheart, I'll never borrow money from you because I'm never broke, okay? Because I know how to save money. Second of all, you got a job and an apartment. That does not make you better than anybody. You're 23 years old. You should have a fucking job and a fucking apartment since you got a fucking three-year-old baby. You should have those things. This is not things that people don't do normally. This is what is expected in life. So you don't get no kudos and no gift certificates from me because you got a fucking job and an apartment for you and your son and your baby mama to live in. You ain't doing nothing spectacular that somebody else ain't doing. My 19-year-old daughter Tati's got a job a full-time job, and an apartment where she pays all her bills, and she has a baby, okay? So, you're really not doing anything that she's been doing already, unfortunately. So, with that being said, you know what I mean? Certain things need to be put on hold. Honestly, when I was his age, I had my own apartment. And I wasn't that stable, but I have five kids and two grandchildren. And sometimes I feel like this, Tara. I wish that I could have put some things on hold before I turned a certain age. Meaning the first thing that I wish I could have put on hold was having a baby. I had my first son and my first child at 18, which is the disrespectful one. And yeah, we might have grew up together, but I was 18. So being 18, having a baby and not being stable and living with my mom and certain things like that kind of held me back and made my career goals take a little bit longer than expected you know what I'm saying because I didn't hold on or just 
just chill for a minute with having a baby. Babies, like I said, are the best thing in the world. They're a beautiful thing, and I love them to death. I have my grandson all the time, um, my little Tinky. He's one years old. I have him all the time, and it's a great thing to have them around you because it feels like they give you life. They rejuvenate you. I just feel totally, like, so energized when I have my grandson. Other than that, if I don't have him on the days when she's off, I'm kind of like slumpy laying around. I really don't have much to do but make a wig and I need my grandbaby. However, I am already stable and settled in life to where, you know what I'm saying? I'm 41 years old. I got kids. I got grandkids. I got a husband-to-be. I got a house, whatever. Nice. Everything is cool. But if I could change my past and and have made my future a lot better for my children than I would have and I wish I could have but you know what these are not regrets it's just things that I wish I could have did a little bit better to better my life but even more so better my kids life so the most important thing that you can think of when you're thinking about the situation and the scenario is what about your child now this may not affect you too hard being pregnant as an intern however nobody wants to take a certain situation and say what if what if you know what I'm saying one year is not a long time at all and why not do this when you're ready things happen yeah shit do happen people get pregnant you know what I mean but your mom may be a little right sometimes we don't finish things or projects that we do because of certain situations and you never want to push that goal behind because of another goal that you want to get it's always best to finish what you put out first and then go on to the next step you guys have been married for a year. You've been high school sweethearts. And I guarantee you, if you guys are in love more now than you have ever been, he is not going to go nowhere. And if you sit down and explain to him, listen, this is what I feel or how I'm feeling about if I'm pregnant as an intern, they may reject me and I might not be able to finish what I've attempted to start. And I really want to wait another year. I'm ready to have a baby, but for the best interest of us, as a family, I would like to wait a year. That's my personal opinion of having a baby. Nobody has to be rich. You don't have to be rich. The best of financially stable. Don't want to be homeless neither. However, the part where you wrote that you rent a townhouse. So what you rent a house? How about this, girl? You got somewhere to fucking live, right? Not everybody wants to have a house. Nobody wants... A lot of people don't want the ownership, the responsibilities of having their own home. Because when you have your own home, if it's broke, the money is coming out of your pocket and your ass got to get it fixed. If you renting it and something gets broke, you are not responsible for it. And hey, I'm going to be the first to tell you, that is easy living. So what if you rent? As long as you paying your rent, you got somewhere to live. And it's the same thing with a house. As long as you're paying your mortgage, you got somewhere to live. So never downgrade yourself and kick yourself down and say, well, because we rent a townhouse. Because you got more than a whole lot of people got. Some people rent rooms. Or some people don't even rent rooms. They're at the shelter. So be happy with what you have and just progress in life. And progress. So that way, when it's your turn... To get pregnant when it's time after you've graduated, then you at home, you relax, you got your feet up because you don't have to rush off to go to school. You won't have to rush off and go to work because you've accomplished the school. You finished it. So now is your time, big and pregnant, to relax at home and nurture and care for your soon-to-be baby. Just that easy. And your husband has been working and has graduated for quite some time. So you guys are really stable. So May is not a long time around the corner for him to finish schooling and graduate and get a good job. And you guys start saving some money. And then when you are finished in 2017, which is really around the corner too, Tara. Because before you know it, it will be 2017. And we'll be looking back like, damn, time has flown by. And you have graduated. And then to just celebrate that graduation, that diploma. Get in the sack with your husband and commence to baby making. That's my opinion. But I'm pretty sure that your grandfather who has passed away would probably feel the same way. You know what I'm saying? We as parents, we as grandparents, we always want the best for our kids and our grandkids. So I'm pretty sure if he could speak to you, he would tell you the same thing. Baby, wait. Get your degree, your diplomas. And then go on and start your family. Because you already have a family now. With you and your husband are family. Whether you have kids or not. You just want to bring someone else into the circle. And hey, ain't nothing wrong with bringing a little person in the circle. Because let me tell you, they are blessings. And they will make your life so much happier. 
Trust me. I got five of them. And even though I don't speak to that asshole, I still love him. But he really needs to realize you don't disrespect women. And until then, I really don't have much to say to him at all. Mm. Okay, so let's read this one here. So this one is already name changed and her name is Riri. Now, I really need, um, I'm just going to read it. I really need some advice. Please help me. I feel like I'm losing it. I'm going to try to make this short. I was with this guy in high school for one month, but I was still stuck on my ex-boyfriend of four years that used to, that used to abuse me since I was 16. So the guy I was with for a month in 2014, when he got out of jail, we ended up kicking it off fast, moved in together right away. He questioned me about my past body count, I guess, my past body count, meaning how many people she had sex with. And I told him three and, and didn't tell him about the other two because it wasn't a relationship. So in general, she had sex with five people. We argued about it a lot, then moved past it, so I thought. I ended up getting pregnant, and he's now a month old. The baby is now a month old. This past week, something happened to him. And my boyfriend started saying, we're in slavery times. And I knew, and I was being a hoe, because I didn't tell him we were slaves. I don't know what that means. He choked me in front of my two-year-old from a previous relationship and fought on me like I was a dude. It's crazy because I love him and I care about him, but at the same time, I'm confused on what I should do. He calls me an ugly bitch, bald-headed bitch, because I cut my hair recently. He also says white woman in a black woman's body and a hoe. He told me I'm a hoe because I have two kids. He tells me I'm basic and it hurts because I really already feel ugly and have insecurities. He's threatened to kill me and my family. He is now denying our child since he went back to live with his mother. He done told me don't give a damn. He don't give a damn about the baby or the baby mama, meaning me, shaking my head. What should I do? Please help me. Even if you can't make a video, I'm 21 years old and I really need some support and advice. Thanks, love. Riri. Now, first of all, I don't know. I don't be up on the trend things too much or slang or the lingo because I'm 41 years old. I don't need to know about no fucking slang, okay? I still say, oh, that shit look fresh or that shit look dope, okay? That 41 years old. What the hell? I don't, I don't I, you know, I try to speak uh, good English. I don't really know too many slangs. I, I, I've been told that I mispronounced the word thought. I finally said it right, thought. I was saying like, hey, I thought about that. Same shit. And I finally found out what it means. Those hoes out there. Whatever. I'm really not that great with the lingo. Fleek. I had to get my kids to tell me what does that mean. You know, bank. Like, okay. So, tell me if I'm wrong. Is this a new slang terminology? Um, when she said, he started saying we in slavery times and I knew we were slaves. Like, what the fuck is that supposed to mean? I'm really not sure because from what I'm reading... It sounds like this is a white girl writing me because she said white woman and a black woman's body. So, how could he say that to her? Or maybe he was saying it to her because she's white and that's just some dumb shit that comes out of his mouth. Either way, either way, Riri, why the fuck do you care if he don't give a shit about you? Because after reading this email, from what I could gather from it, he seemed like a dumb ass. Like, a real fucking dumbass. Now, here's the thing. It's one thing, um, y'all are young, or whatever. Y'all is young. Okay, so, you got one relationship that you got out of, and he was beating you since you was 16. Now, you with this asshole who's beating on you and calling you all types of names. Ugly bitch, bald-headed bitch, um, white woman in a black woman's body calling you hoes, and all kind of shit like that. I wish a nigga would, okay? Let me tell you some shit. My ex-husband tried to call me a fat bitch one time. This was before I had lost all this weight. And I wasn't fat, but it didn't even matter if I was. Who the fuck are you to call me a fat bitch? He called me a fat bitch. How much 
times can you call somebody a fat bitch? He called it to me once because that's the only amount of times you got to call me a fat bitch. Don't call me no type of bitch, first of all. But don't stand there and call me some fat bitch. So that nigga called me a fat bitch. How about this? When I was done with his ass, he was escaping out of the bedroom window, okay? Leaving the house out of the bedroom window because he damn sure wasn't coming through the bedroom door. Because I was standing out there waiting for his ass and it wasn't hands free either. You was either going to come out and get cut the fuck up or you was going to go out the window and land on your two feet. We, we lived on the first floor, so he was all right. But, and this, yeah, but... You ain't about to stand there and call me no fucking names out your mouth. You're not about to call me out with your mouth, okay? You're not about to call me out of my character. When a man can call you all these kinds of bitches, then that lets you know right there, that nigga ain't worth shit. And he don't respect no fucking woman. I wish a nigga would call me a bald-headed bitch, a fat bitch, a ugly bitch, a hoe. Because by the time you finish saying bitch, you ain't going to have no lips to pronounce the rest of the words bitch that you want to call me. I will rip your motherfucking tongue out and cut your lips the fuck off. Disrespectful ass motherfucker. Or if I don't do that, what I'm going to do is I'm going to go upside your fucking head with a nice heavyweight skillet. You ain't about to stand up inside of my shit where I reside and call me no kind of names and think that I give a fuck because you went back to your mother's house. Please, Ruby, goodbye to bad rubbers. Bye, Felicia. Bye. You should be happy that he ain't claiming you or the baby. Let his ass go, because he seemed like a fucking dunce anyway. And I'm sorry, but... I'm going to just say it like this. Some of these black men that get with white girls, they get with these white girls, because if you're white, because that's what you wrote, a white woman in black girl's body, all right? They get, they get with you white girls sometimes on a simple fact is they feel like y'all are pushovers because black women are very aggressive from what I've been told by many of black men. And I wasn't dating them, but my father's done told, my father done told me this. My mother was the only black woman he's ever dated. You know what I'm saying? And my father is not fully black. So my mom was the only black woman he's married and had a kid with. He's dated another black woman, but he couldn't deal with it because black women are very aggressive and we are very like non-filtered. We no holds barred. We are very aggressive women. So a lot of them they say we we like the white woman because they'll give me what I want. They're they're submissive and shit like that, and they're pushovers. Um. So, white girls, if y'all are watching this and you dating a black dude, please don't let him walk the fuck all over you. Because it doesn't have, it shouldn't have anything to do with color. You should not be walked all over regardless if you're Chinese, black, Puerto Rican, Mexican, Hawaiian, whatever. You are a person. But some men are like that. Some don't see past the color thing. And some do. Some don't even see color. They just want you because they want you and they love you. But some of them that are out to get what they can get. The users and abusers. The fucking the, the scum of the earth motherfuckers. They are the ones that rather be with someone of a different origin. Because they feel like they can push over them. Because they feel as though because they're a black man. That they got it going on, and because they got it, they they think that they got the mandingo or whatever. And I'm gonna tell you, girls, this: not all you black motherfuckers out there got a mandingo. So let's stop running because I've dated some that had a fucking chapstick sized dick. Okay, not all black men is packing, and I'm pretty sure I'm not the only one that knows this. That's watching, okay, in YouTube world. So, but black guys do date white women because. Some of them date white women because of certain reasons, and some of them just date them because it's truly a chemistry, okay? And that's the best type of relationship because it's a real chemistry, and they have real feelings. However, it seems like Riri, that he is trying to get over on you, and by calling you names and shit, I wouldn't even fucking deal with him, okay? Be happy that his ass is going back to his mama house, his mama house. That nigga couldn't pack up his shit and go to his own shit. He had to pack up his little bags and run home to mommy. Because she's probably the one that enables him. She's an enabler. She'll take care of him. Oh, come back home, honey. I'm going to take care of you. You know, I told you about that, girl. I told you because that's how some mothers are. However, with this motherfucker right here, if he's putting his hands on you and he's fighting you like a dude and he's calling you all types of names out his mouth, he has no respect for not just you, but for women in general. And that type of pattern right there, it's never going to get no better. 
Do you honestly think Riri he gonna wake up tomorrow and say, you know what? I love you, girl. I am gonna behave and I'm not gonna do this shit no more. But now on top of that, he's threatening to kill you and your family. I wish a nigga would. I wish a nigga would. You be leaving out of my house in cuffs because you ain't about to sit around and threaten me and then threaten my family. It's one thing to threaten me. But when you bring my family into the shit and you think you're going to fucking threaten to kill them, you out your rabbit ass mind. And sometimes these motherfuckers say shit and don't even mean it because they ass can't even fucking kill a fly. Some of these niggas that threaten and fight girls, they can't be a real man in the street. And that's the thing. You got a dude that likes to beat on women and degrade women. Put him in front of a room with some real niggas, some real men, and let him talk some shit. That nigga will get his ass whooped. Because those are the type of people that he like. He feels strong and he feels like macho beating on a woman. But you can't go and fight a man. And that's the sad part about it. So I wouldn't even worry about his ass. Let him stay in his mother house. And if I were you... I will make sure to go ahead and get me an order of protection away from him. Therefore, if he does come back and threaten you, you have everything against him that will land his little scum bucket back in jail. Because obviously he's been in jail. You've already said that. He hasn't learned his lesson and maybe he needs a new vacation. But what should you do? Bitch, run. Okay? What the fuck you mean what should you do? You still love him? Okay, I understand the love thing. We all love, we all have been in love, and sometimes the love is only because of something that we may have in common with each other, which is that child, okay? If it wasn't for him, you wouldn't have another baby. Okay, great, said and done, okay? However, it does not mean that you need to spend the rest of your fucking life or some more years being miserable with a straight-up asshole. And from the email that I've read, calling you a hoe, asking you how many body counts you had, like asking you how many people you had sex with. First of all, let me tell you what. I'm not about to sit up here and discuss with you how many motherfuckers that I fucked before you. Just know this, that I don't have shit. I don't have no disease. You ain't gonna catch nothing. Don't worry about who I'm fucking because I guarantee you when they fucking criticize you and talk shit to you because you said you had sex with three people, then they multiply that by five or whatever because that's what the music director says, Um, that song says or whatever. But whatever. They tell you, the man tells you, I only fucked five, ten bitches. Liar, you motherfuckers and fucked ten bitches last night. I mean in a lifetime span. You know what I'm saying? You don't judge nobody on how many times they've had sex with somebody or who they had sex with. What the fuck does it matter? You don't know the motherfucker. And what you want to know for? You want to fuck them? That's not your business. Certain shit that goes on in a past relationship should not be brought up in a new relationship. Unless, one, you got some kind of sexually transmitted disease that your ass cannot get rid of. Then that should be brought up or two, you got a fucking house full of kids and you need to let him know that should be brought up. But you should not be sitting there discussing how many motherfuckers you fucked and how often and how and which and way and how it felt, okay? That's not they motherfucking business, all right? I just don't think that's their business. I've had that situation with my ex-husband where he wanted to know, nigga, it's not your business. Like I would tell him, why do you need to know? You don't even know them, okay? And this is what I would say. You don't even know them. What you need to know for? You don't know them. You don't know them. You know of two of them, okay? Which is my fiance now because he's my son's father. Of course you knew I was fucking him. We got kids together. And had you known that I was still fucking him because you're a fuck up, you personally fuck up, and you're a drunk and you just fuck up and shit, and then you would know, okay, all right, she done fucked him and then she's still fucking him. I don't really think that it's your business. I mean, personally, do you really think that I want to know how many people my fiance had sex with after we broke up when my son was like one i don't really want to know this okay i know of some of them and they was trollops and i'm not saying that because of me but because he told me and because they were really not in importance okay but i don't really want to know his body count that's not my business and i don't really feel like he needs to know how many people I slept with either, okay? I'm not saying I'm a hoe or a thought. However, certain things you just got to keep on the low. And if he wants to call you a hoe because you slept around, nigga, please kiss my ass and go somewhere. You don't need to be bothered with him, Riri. He's a loser. How you going to call a woman out her name? Like, 
that's just, I think that's the lowest of the low. And if he's constantly doing it and you've got insecurities and you feel ugly, never feel ugly and never let him know you have insecurities. Don't never let them see you sweat. Don't let his ugly ass, and I don't even know what he looks like, but he sounds very ugly. Don't let his ugly ass get you in a rut to where you feeling bad about yourself. Because if you do allow that, you let him win. And honestly, he ain't worth fucking the two cent stamp that I'll put on a fucking envelope. So what should you do? Well, my opinion of what you should do. Hmm. Leave his ass the fuck alone. Because his type of crazy ain't your type of crazy. And his type of crazy seem like it's going to get a little bit more crazier. So let that nigga go and say goodbye. And let Riri know what you would do. So I'm going to get to the third one. This is the last one. I'm going to go speedy through this one. Hey, April. I just want to start out and say that I love you and your channel. And it gives me life. I'm 17, almost 18. And you can call me Jay. So when I was in 8th grade, I met a guy named Kay. He was such a nice person. And he is 3 years older than me. He has saw me and just had to get to know me. And we talked and he was such a nice friend. I eventually moved out of state. And when my freshman year rolled around, we talked constantly. As time went on, we realized we liked each other and decided to date long distance. It didn't last long due to the fact that he said, I love you. And I said it out of guilt. And he thought we moved so fast. So we stayed friends. And one day he tells me he has a child. At this point, he's already graduated. And one day he said, I have a daughter. Long story short... It wasn't his, and years ago, years go on, and we still stay friends. He has some. He was someone I confide in. Let's go to early of last year. He makes a statement: "If you graduated single, you're mine." I knew he was in love with me, and April come, and April comes where, and and I knew he was in love with me. And April comes. We're talking, and I'm falling for him again. And one week he was just being an asshole for no reason. And one day he texts me and tells me he has a girlfriend. I was pissed and went off on him and blocked him everywhere but Facebook. I found his bitch that he was dating and then I seen an ultrasound. I thought she was pregnant. He contacted me and apologized to me and explained that this that his that his so-called ex was lying about the pregnancy and he had to go along with it to expose her. I believed him and we got so close and we started making plans of getting back together this year after graduation. The middle and beginning of December comes and tell and he's telling me that his sister is having a baby. He posted an Instagram picture of picture holding her. He called all his family, his little family, his little one. He used the term so loosely I didn't realize. Then the day before Christmas he tells me I have a daughter. Mixed up this whole elaborate story and began to tell me that I can't handle anything and his daughter comes before and it as if I don't already know that. I'm about to turn 18. I don't have time to try and help raise a child. So weeks go by. I didn't speak to him and he tried to tell me it was a joke. But if it was really a joke, why wait so long to tell me? What the hell am I supposed to do? I'm so over it and this is the third time with this type of situation. Thank you so much. Woo, we're going to call her Evelyn. Oh, she, she said call her Jay. Okay, so, J damn, Jay's about to be 18. She's 18. She got a boyfriend. Or she's not even his boyfriend anymore. They, they liked each other. Then they wanted to become boyfriend and girlfriend. Long story short, he's saying that he got a baby. Then he's saying it was a joke. Then he's saying that wasn't his baby. His his ex, his girlfriend, soon-to-be ex-girlfriend, was lying about the ultra challenge. She's not really pregnant, but he's going along with it to expose her. Then he tried to say his sister had a baby, and that's the baby in the picture he was holding, and all of this, and all this. Then he's telling her, you know what, I have a daughter. That was really his daughter, but she comes first. Then he's trying to say it was a joke. It really wasn't his daughter. And what should she do? Man, leave that motherfucker alone because he tells too many goddamn lies and stories. Either you got a kid or don't. Don't try to hide the shit and lie because you want some pussy. Just be man enough about your shit and say, yes, I got a baby and this is that. And of course, she's going to come before any other female or anybody in my life because she's an importance to me. But don't go around town making up lies and shit. This is the type of shit that I be talking about. When you got to get in a relationship with somebody, but before you get in a relationship with the person, you got to get an investigator on their ass because they be lying. Nobody got time for story time. This ain't no fiction, non-fiction book, nigga. Either you do or you don't have a child. Don't sit here one minute and tell me you got a baby. Then the next minute you telling me it was a joke. Then you telling me, no, it is really the truth. Like, what the fuck? That means right there that he's a fucking pathological liar. A pathological liar. You can't believe another, a fucking word he say. And you just said it. Jay, please. 
That nigga got a baby. His ass probably got more than one baby talking about you can't handle it. Let me tell you something. You 18, you don't need to raise nobody's fucking baby. Live your life and get you somebody that don't got no kids because you ain't got no kids and you still a teenager. This nigga want to be running around town. One minute he got a baby. One minute he don't got a baby. One minute he got a baby. One minute he don't got a baby. He ain't got no fucking sense. He don't make no fucking sense. I'm not going to say I don't have a kid if I don't have one or I have a kid and I don't have one. It's either you do or you fuck don't either way he's a fucking blatant liar and ain't nobody got time for story times we grown-ups and we're not even grown-ups but we 18 we go to school we go to work we having kids if you want to pretend to be a grown-up because you have a kid then act like one don't sit there and fucking lie and tell the girl oh you ain't got a one you ain't got a baby it's a joke and now you got a baby nigga please go over there with your baby mama be with her because I guarantee you that's not his ex. That's his girlfriend. They still together. He's taking pictures. He's with that bitch. He's a liar for one. He's just a blatant pathological liar and he's making up stories. Nobody needs no false fiction bullshit relationship. Fucking leave his ass the hell alone. Let him tell story time to some next bitch that he barely knows and she can fall for it. But you can see past all of that. Don't let that nigga pull no wool over your eyes. Tell him to poof be gone. Bye, Felicia. Because your story is not wrapping together. You don't need no boyfriend like that. Because in the end, all you're going to fucking do is second guess everything he says. And why be bothered second guessing what another motherfucker says? That's going to fuck up the whole relationship. And then the whole time, you're going to just try to figure out what this motherfucker's talking about. Please. Hmm. Jay, say poof, be gone. Bye, Felicia. And let him tend to his baby since you can't handle it. And like you said, you can't raise nobody's kids because you 18 and you a kid yourself. So let all these beautiful ladies know your thoughts and opinions. And as always, stay diva and devolicious. And I'll see you girls on my next video.